If you were steam, you'd have an inferiority complex. Because once upon a time, steam was a much bigger deal than it is today. There was a time when steam was king. It powered electricity and trains. It, it was amazing. I mean, now steam has been demoted to heating milk for a latte or to get wrinkles out of clothes. Well, steam may not be king anymore, but here at the Henry Ford, it's at least like a prince or a vice president. These beautiful works of craftsmanship are wonderful to look at, but they also tell a story, a very important story. These are steam engines, and these amazing giants of iron and steel helped launch us into the industrial age. In fact, steam engines generated power way before there was electricity. Like most far-reaching innovations, steam engines were created to solve a distinct problem. In this case, coal mines that were flooded with water. The Henry Ford's Mark Ruther showed me the oldest, most complete surviving steam engine, dating back to 1760. There are so many treasures in this museum that I knew about before. I didn't know a lot about this one, but it's a really big deal. Yeah, it's a, it's a big thing. This was a fixture in the community. It actually had an affectionate name. The locals called it Fairbottom Bob's. Fairbottom Bob. Fairbottom Bob. It's Fairbottom Valley and Bob's because I guess of the movement. So essentially we've got a boiler. We've got a large mechanism for using the steam from that boiler. We've got pumps going on down into the mine that was the installation for this engine. This was to get water out of mines. Out of mines. Deeper you dig, more water that gets in there. Fairbottom Bob's worked by heating water inside the boiler creating steam which was transferred to a cylinder with a piston inside. The pressure inside the cylinder drove the piston up and down, forcing a connected beam up and down, and causing a bucket on the other end of the beam to rise out of the mine shaft filled with water. So this is connected to this. Absolutely via that beam, via these chains. So this is why the engines were built in the first place. This is the pump. This would go down into the mine originally. This is the pump that would pump the water out of the mine. These technologies, these overgrown water pumps are the beginning of the world that we inhabit now. But at the time, no one has a clue they're really changing what we then now understand as the Industrial Revolution. Steam-powered technology grew exponentially into different kinds of mechanical devices, creating whole new industries and jobs. This one looks sleeker, a little more efficient. This was an engine designed by James Watt. And Watt is what a light bulb has, many of them. That's true, his name is used for that unit. And generally speaking, James Watt is sort of recognized by most people as the inventor of the steam engine. Not only did Watt improve the steam engine, he developed the concept of horsepower. No wonder the standard unit of power, the Watt, is named after him. Watt takes it to the next level. He, in fact, designs engines that start to make sense outside of mines, that start to make sense to drive machinery. This is where the Industrial Revolution really starts to snowball. Once James Watt got the Industrial Revolution going, there was no turning back, and many steam engine innovations followed. Lucky for us, Henry Ford loved steam power and collected for his museum many steam engines, including this one. I think it's an espresso machine. 